Ahead of tonight's Grammy Awards, I sat down with a giant of the music industry who at 75 years old is still trying to make his fans' dreams come true. Legendary singer-songwriter Daryl Hall is back on stage preparing for a new tour. Best known for being one half of the iconic rock and soul duo Hall & Oates, his new album, Before After, is the first ever collection of his solo work. Material found on five albums, from 1980's Sacred Songs to 2011's Laughing Down Crying. It also includes highlights from his long-running online series, Live from Daryl's House, where he's collaborated with a range of artists, including Sammy Hagar, Sharon Jones, Smokey Robinson, and CeeLo Green. We spoke with Daryl Hall in upstate New York in between rehearsals. All right, cool. So you're about to get back on the road. What have, I am. What have you missed the most about live performance? The actual performance. <laughs> Everything else is terrible. <laughs> you know, it's just travel. It's, it's very military. You know, you know, hurry up and wait, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, when you're on, the, on stage for whatever time you're on there, that's, that's when it gets good, you know, yeah, and yeah. you never know what's going to happen. How did you maintain your creative process during the pandemic? I hibernated. I, I didn't fight it. I actually didn't even play my instruments. I didn't write any songs. I stayed in one place, uh, which is totally weird because I've been traveling since I was a teenager all over the world. So, so where did the idea come from to do uh, before after? Part of it was that, was that re time of reflection, really. Uh, I think a lot of people, you know, you reevaluate things. You know, you see, uh, my whole life changed. Everybody's life changed. If not now, when? You know, it's time to put, it's time to show the world. I've been doing it with Daryl's house, showing my sort of alternative side and my alternative career, basically. Uh, and I played a lot of those songs over the years on the Daryl's house show, but I never, I never really released any compilation or, or, or paid that much attention to the recorded versions of all these all these albums I've made over the years. Mm -hmm. And I thought now's the time to do it and show that's what I do. I do stuff with John Oates, I do stuff with, with other people. Yeah. And let's put it all out there. Hall got his start in the Philadelphia music scene as part of a group called the Temptones while studying at Temple University. It was a, it was a vocal group, street corner group, you know? That, that was popular back then. I made my first record with uh, Kenny Gamble and Romeos, you know? Huh. And um, in, in a four-track studio, Virtue Studios on North Broad Street, I was really involved in that whole world. You know, it was it was it was the beginning of the, what people know as the sound of Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and I was I was part of that. Yeah. And then after college is when you met John Oates. I met John. Yeah. And he was sort of playing guitar in the Temp Tones for a while, you know, back and forth. But we decided to do something for real after after we got out of school. Daryl Hall and John Oates released their first album together in 1972, eventually becoming the most successful duo in American pop history. They've earned all kinds of accolades, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum inductees, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, all for their enduring hits such as Sarah Smile. Private eyes. Private eyes. I'm watching you. Private eyes. Rich girl. Rich girl. And it's going too far because you know it don't matter anywhere. And you make my dreams. Make my dreams come true. They topped Billboard's Hot 100 half a dozen times. These days, their music is sampled by rappers, and they continue to find new young fans online, like YouTube stars Tim and Fred Williams, famous for their reaction okay. videos. I love it. Got that little jazz for it. Like that, yeah. that groove, that little blues that make you want to thrill. So baby, talk with me. But Hall says, despite the success or because of it, at times, he found it hard to branch out creatively, since his solo work is more adventurous and less commercial than what he recorded with John Oates. 
It's hard, man. It's really a hard thing to do. Uh, I didn't always succeed with it. You know, uh, a lot of there's a lot of frustration involved uh, because the business of music has a different agenda than the creation of music. In in my particular situation, I was sort of a victim of success, where I had to compete with myself. Mm. Uh, and the record company was looking at the cash cow. They were looking at what was going to make them the most money. That was Daryl Hall, John Oates. And my other stuff that I was doing, even though I was having success with it, it, uh, it, 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 it when you balance it out, what are they going to do? They're going to yeah. they're going to push the other side. In fact, RCA was it refused to put out one of your solo albums, and yeah. so, you, so you leaked it to a music yeah. journalists. They, yeah, they they just said I, it was so crazy. I mean, I made this great album with Robert Fripp, and it was really really a groundbreaking album. And uh, you know, it wasn't Rich Girl Jr. <laughs> <laughs> How do you write songs that are timeless and enduring? What, what's your process? It comes in all different, in, in many different ways. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes it'll be a drum groove, you know. Sometimes it'll be a, a chord progression. Sometimes it'll be just a phrase that that runs in my head. Uh, any of any combination of that is, is can make a song. Uh, you know, I don't really have a formula. Did you know that so many of your hits would be hits when you wrote them? No, not yeah. even close. I had, I never think of, I don't think of songs as like, this is going, I'm going to write a hit, you know, or this is going to, so occasionally I'll think, well, this could be a hit, but you never know. You just never know. Sometimes a song that I think is going to be hit isn't a hit. To what do you attribute your longevity in this business? It's hard for me to say. You know, I mean, I think I write songs that seem to, well, they obviously, they cross generations, which is fantastic. I love that. Uh, I mean, it's so fulfilling. Uh, I don't know, there's some timeless quality, uh, some universal thing that I, that I know how to touch on. It has to do with my personal experiences that it, I guess everybody else shares. I, it's the best way I could put it. Timeless songs sustaining Daryl Hall's towering 50-year career.